Hi everyone, it's Anne here from Positively Paper Craft and I'm back today with 21 ways that you can use embossing folders. So I hope you'll stick with us and I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay, so the first one is double embossing and that is using two embossing folders. And you can see here, I think, the kind of effect I mean. So I've got beautiful flowers and a brick folder underneath. So, dead easy. I've just picked two folders. Now, I recommend using a regular folder and then more of a 3D folder. I found it got a better effect. Take the flat folder first. Well, I'm saying flat, you know, just like a um, regular folder, really. So we're going to emboss that first. So there's our bricks. And then I'm going to take this beautiful Crafters Companion 3D folder. I'm going to spritz the card with a little bit of water. It just helps it from cracking because it's a 3D folder. And then I'm going to run this through. And there we go. It's obviously it flattens a bit of the the original pattern, but we now have a brick in the middle and we have these beautiful flowers. So give it a try. Let's move on to technique number two. Okay, technique two is embossing washi tape. So basically, I've covered this card in a lovely pastel washi tape. I'm gonna take a Sizzix 3D folder. I'm gonna spray the card just with water on the back. And then I'm gonna pop it in the folder. Look how awesome that's turned out. Because what it does is it kind of ingrinds the washi tape in the card. Um, so really now it just looks like a patterned stripy paper. So if you've got washi tape that you don't use, which we all do, just design your own patterned paper with it. So there we go. Let's move on to technique three. Okay, technique three, I'm loving this one, and it is decoupage with embossing folders. Um, I came up with this the other day, and I think it's actually pretty cool. So an embossing folder here, uh, I love this, and obviously it embosses, but then if you run your chosen folder, could say three of these out, and then what I did was I cut all of these little country elements out three times and then what I did was I popped them up on foam pads and now we have a decoupage card which I think is really nice I just put some blue distress ink on first and then I cut those out I'm lying it wasn't three times it was two and then I just popped them up with foam pads and you've got a really dimensional card so give that a go, decoupaging with your folders. So we'll move on to technique four. All right, technique four, this is a really nice one too. You can stamp with your embossing folders. So basically turn them into a stamp. And you know, this one is really nice. I'm, I really like this. So I've got another folder here. Now what you want to do is you want to get the raised area and um, not the inverted you want the raised if you feel it you will feel it's raised you can use whatever ink you want on us obviously don't use an archival or a stays on because whether or not you would get it off i'm not sure so i'm going to use a distressed ink in picked raspberry all i'm going to do is just start to wipe over 
with this ink. Now don't press too hard because we obviously only want to try and get you know the raised areas. Now this is a piece of card it's not big enough but I'm not I'm not particularly bothered. I'm just going to place it down. Now you don't want to move it and then you can get a bit you could get a bit of kitchen paper or even a little brier anything to rub over doesn't matter that ink's gone on the card because that would be the back and let's have a look there we go isn't that so pretty and I suppose depending on what ink you use um, maybe it's a pigment ink this is these are water based so you would probably get more of a crisper look um, but yeah give that a try because it opens up a whole nother level of creating little backgrounds for your cards. So let's move on to number five. Okay number five now this is more of a tip I suppose really. Um, this is a brilliant way to keep track of what embossing folders you have and how they emboss you know what the finished result will be like. Basically I just took a tag die cut them cut it out and emboss them and then I put this little ring over the top and I have got quite a lot more ready to do just spare tags and I'm gonna do the do the rest of them but a brilliant way to keep track now if you want to you could write on the back I would maybe write on the back before you emboss it because you don't want it your pen sticking in the little crevices or you could put a little label on if you have a little label machine but yeah that's a great little tip. So let's move on to number six. All right, number six. Now I know you've probably done this, but I think we forget about em he uh, embossing vellum. You know, it turns out so nice and it just gives a completely different look for your backgrounds and stuff. But also, what about patterned vellum? I've got some of this patterned vellum and I'm going to put it in this folder here and give it a bit of an extra pattern so it doesn't just have to be plain vellum. There we go so we have a little flowers peeping through but then we have this beautiful kind of leafy vine so give that a try as well if you have a patterned vellum maybe you don't really like the pattern you can add what you do like or just regular vellum so let's move on to number seven all right so number seven is you can emboss with stencils now i know this is not an embossing folder but i thought i would still share it because you can kind of create your own embossing folder look so this one I quickly made with just a random stencil here you can see that there and then I'm going to try with this brick one here now I use the embossing uh, set from Sizzix So you get a white mat and you get a kind of grey rubber mat. So I've got a bit of card here. Now you need a your base platform and one cutting pad. So it's base platform, cutting pad, then you want your card. So you would be card and stencil, but then you want to put them face down on the on the cutting pad. Then you want the grey mat over that, then the white plastic pad, and then you want to run it through.
and then it gives a lovely embossed look and also a debossed as well so a brilliant way to create an emboss and folder look from all of your stencils so let's move on to number eight okay number eight is i think i've done this one before but maybe as people haven't seen it or you or you just don't know you can make your own kind of emboss and folder effect by just using die cuts so i've picked one of my favorite dies a bit of card i've just got a craft mat here now double sided adhesive it's probably worthwhile cutting them out with that um i didn't put any on only because this die is a little bit funny um it doesn't cut the best in a couple of places and it won't cut it at all if i put that on so i'm just going to use glue but another thing is just a little sponge you can even buy little kitchen sponges it doesn't have to be a specific craft sponge and just pop some glue uh, on your mat whoopsie <laughs> maybe it's not as much as that but anyway just start to pop some glue on the die cuts like i say if you haven't got any double-sided adhesive and then what you can do is just start layering it and you want to make sure you put some like off the page so it looks more realistic a more realistic pattern think you get the idea and then when you cut little bits off don't throw them until you're finished because what you can do is you know say put some little filler bit pieces in and honestly that's what makes it look more realistic and then once it's dry you can put inks over it you know it really does create a lovely dimensional emboss and folder effect so let's move on to number nine okay so let's do number nine now this is called well i'm calling it a white pigment ink technique and i've got um, a 3d emboss and folder from sizzix this is fallen leaves card i've got two colors of distress ink Kitch Flamingo Worn Lipstick and I've got a pigment white ink pad. I'm going to ink two colours of pink just kind of so they sort of blend in the middle and then I will show you what we're going to do. three times just to make sure it's all embossed there so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this white pigment pad and I'm going to gently just start to swipe it over And that just creates it just can you see it like it makes it look even more 3d it makes it pop basically and I did do an example one for you and I can't find it I've searched everywhere 
and it was lovely because I made it with the floral mandala folder but I can't find it but yeah give it a try because it just makes the design pop even more so let's move on to technique 10 okay so number 10 this one is really really simple and I'm just calling it the cut up technique so I've got a folder and I have embossed it in three different colours they're all exactly the same size and I'm going to cut it into three got the exact it's all lined up but it's three different colors you could do it the other way you could do them um, diagonally horizontal vertical any way you want so let's move on to number 11 I have got the Paisley 3d embossing folder from Sizzix now I've got some distress oxide I'm using broken china and I've got a Distress Oxide spray, which is um, Vintage Photo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the debossed side. Oops. And I'm going to wipe the ink on it. just so it covers and then I'm going to take a piece of card which I'm going to give a spritz with water and then I'm going to pop it in And I'm just going to run this through the embossing machine. Okay, so we end up with this. Now I'm not going to take the paper out. And what I'm going to do is with the spray, I am going to get my little box that I made and I'm just going to spritz this ink just in I'm going to try and sort of aim for the little crevices, the bits that the inward ink pad can't reach, that focusing. There, there we go. And then just take a bit of paper towel. And what you can do is just gently kind of wipe over the top just want to aim for getting having the distress oxide in the little crevices so make sure that's folders in the right place close it down and we're going to run it back through and then you get like a very kind of distressed kind of look but as I said I've probably sprayed a bit too much on actually we really only wanted it to kind of overtake it but I think it's just such a nice distressed sort of look and it looks quite Moroccan I think but experiment with different colours see what you get so let's move on to number 13 
you know you get embossing folders which cut and emboss in um, one I'm just trying to get one I've got one somewhere here they have like a die inside so they cut and emboss well we're going to kind of make our own four kind of ones so this folder here I took a die cut and I inlaid it back in so I've kind of got the effect of just an extra piece in the middle which gives that kind of cut and emboss kind of look so I'm going to do it with a different folder so I'm going to use this one which is the getting that one with them lovely flowers on and then I'm just going to grab a die now I know there's like a blank part in the middle of the folder there so I'm probably just going to aim this in the middle and I'm going to die cut this out keep so don't throw this away We'll just get all these little bits out. Is take the same bit of card. I'm going to spritz it with water because it's quite a um, sort of 3D-ish type of folder. And then I am going to run this through the machine. Okay. Right, so that's what we have now. And then I am going to mount this on a card base. Now, I think it's nice to have the little cut out there, but you could put, say, gold or silver behind it or something like that. So when you, I know this isn't big enough, but when you mount it on your card like that, what you could do again is if you did want it see-through, you could cut this again from there, or you could just have it white because you just want to glue it back in, or you could also put some, say, gold or silver behind it. So have an experiment with what dies and embossing folders you've got and you can create, you know, some lovely different effects. So. Now this is a kind of combined stamp and emboss. So you really want a folder which isn't too heavy or has maybe, a, you know, more of a softer, clearer, uh, emboss in the middle or just something lighter like this one now I've got a wreath stamp here which is just I think I got this free in a magazine but it's really beautiful uh, by rare earth so I've got this wreath and I've got a piece of card that I know is sufficient to be embossed I'm just going to really stamp it in the middle and I'm going to use memento tux Okay, so I've got a selection of red, green, um, silver, even some uh, sparkle stuff. And I'm basically just going to colour colour these in. So I'm just going to, I've just randomly gone for some greens and things. Okay, now I will say I probably think I would have preferred stamping this with like a green pigment ink um, but I don't have any so this is just to show you what you can do it could be 
a nice sentiment it could be any stamp that you want to use so I'm now gonna pop it in here and I'm just gonna see where it comes to so I think I'm gonna trim some off this because it's a little bit too long So we're going to run this through our machine. Now, this is called a double embossing. What I've got is a Sizzix folder, which is the botanical, really deep folder, ink, embossing ink, embossing powder. And then obviously I've got a heat tool and stuff. Now, what I'm going to do is just emboss this first. Spritz with water in the folder okay beautiful really deep emboss love these folders now that's that get that out the way so we've embossed it once now i'm going to take my embossing ink pad and all I'm going to do is just swipe it over the embossing. I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to, I only want to pick up the embossed parts. That's the idea. So just swipe it over like so. Got some Brilliant Sparkle Feral Gold by Creative Expressions, Cosmic Shimmer, sorry, and I'm going to put it in my tidy tray. Just sprinkle it on. There we go. I think it just gives a lovely kind of distressed sort of look, doesn't it? So pretty. So. Um, I don't know if you've seen this, but these are Sizzix Creamy Acrylics. Now, there's tons more colors, um, but I've just grabbed two of the metallics we have gold uh, gold rose gold uh, rose gold and we also have silver now this is ac actually amazing i think because these are more of a technique type of paint rather than a coverage like say paint and mdf stuff like that the more of a technique paint so that you can use them for your card making scrapbook and all sorts of stuff um, they dry really fast. They are highly pigmented. You can stamp with them, literally put them on your stamp and stamp with them. If you check out my, I might see if I can put the video in the top corner, check out the mixed media backgrounds. Um, I do show you how to stamp with them, particularly the white paint on black cardstock is absolutely incredible. Better than any pigment ink you can ever buy in my opinion because they do eventually fade and they kind of sometimes, I can't explain it, they have sometimes a kind of blurry look where this, the white paint on black is just totally crisp. Now I'm going to show you this because this is amazing. So my favourite is rose gold. <laughs> it's virtually, well I've got about a quarter of it left. I absolutely love this so we really only need that's probably too much probably way too much I've got a brayer although you can use a brush as well if you want to and I'm just gonna put some on the brayer okay so it's dry and it's actually full of embossing powder never mind so we've got our rose gold I'm gonna use elegant 
with a beautiful Sizzix folder. I'm just going to spritz the back of the card with a bit of water in the folder and wait till you see the results of this. Isn't that just incredible? <laughs> Absolutely incredible. So you can make your own gold, silver, rose gold card, emboss it. There's no peeling, there's no sticking. It's not coming off. It Honestly, it's incredible. That was the rose gold. I also did a gold for you to see. Look at that, that is just absolutely beautiful. The metallic sheen on that, just amazing. That was a newer released embossing folder, which is Holly. I think that was from chapter three, um, but yeah. So honestly, if you're you know, up for giving these a try or trying this, I highly, highly recommend these paints. I know a couple of ladies won, the, won some in a giveaway that I did. Um, I think it was the, it might have been, no, it wasn't the 50K one. Anyway, it was a giveaway recently and a couple of ladies won some of these paints. And in fact, they've loved them that much. They've gone back to the Sizzix website and they've ordered some of different colors so you know what does that go to say so honestly i'll put the links for them so let's now i don't know if you knew i came up with this just by fiddling around with napkins um the other day now this is a napkin believe it or not which is embossed with an embossing folder how awesome is that right now I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. So this is what I do. Uh, by the way, that folder was elegant. This folder I'm going to use is Dandelion Wish. So I've got my napkin. I've already removed the backings from it. So it's just the one layer. Piece of cardstock that I know is going to cover the pattern. Now. I use this um, Zig two-way glue pen. You can also use like a Pritt stick, something like that. I've used that many times. It's just as good. Um, and all I'm going to do is give this a shake. And this gives a completely smooth application. You don't get any wrinkles. The same with the glue stick as well. Um, I've tried this like what do you call it? It's like um, plastic wrap or something. You don't need any of that. In my opinion, I think this is way easier. Now, all I do is I just lay the napkin over the card like that. Now, really gently, I take my thumb. And can you see, I'm just going to start to press out the napkin. And you can see now how smooth it's even smoothing out. You know, like the little patterns that they have on the edges of the napkin. Just smooth it out. And the best tip for to get it really smooth is don't have any glue on your fingers because if it sticks where it's a bit sticky there, it's kind of, it leaves, like it drags the napkin up and then it won't lay down put enough glue to cover it. Now turn it over and just snip off the excess. There you go. That is a very smooth application. Now what I then do, I've got my folder. I'm going to turn the napkin, sorry, turn the card over because it's obviously on card and I'm going to give it just a little spritz with water. If you're not using a 3D embossing folder, you won't need to just do the water at all. In there, and then watch how easy it is. You ready? How amazing is that? 
That is just a complete work of art really, isn't it? Now what you do with that, you make can make cards, um, decorate little notebooks, whatever you want, but that is incredible. So get your napkins, get your um, napkins, get your, get your embossing folders out, have a play dead easy. So I've just randomly cut some hearts, it could be flowers, shapes, it could be sentiment dies, anything, anything you want. And I've cut a few that I haven't concentrated on where they were on the plate, but it doesn't matter, we're still going to use them. And I'm just going to say lay them wherever I feel like they need to go or what looks nice, no right or wrong way. something like that so I'm just going to stick them down now you could use double-sided adhesive um, you know if you wanted to I'm just probably going to stick them with glue Now, I've chosen an embossing folder which is Wildflowers, beautiful rose design. And again, I'm just going to spritz it because it's a 3D. And then I'm going to run this through the big shot. And then when we open it, how awesome is that? So now, it, in a way, it really resembles a cardstock, but a, te a beautiful embossed cardstock. Because what it does, especially with these 3D folders from Sizzix, is it pushes all of the little bits in. There's no way of knowing that you created that with die cuts because it's pushed it deep in. So seriously, have a go, because that is beautiful. I mean, you, if you had a heart folder, you could run it through a heart folder, you know, just to keep the theme. Anything you want, like I say, circles, squares, triangles, hexagons. It could be like a big sentiment die running across and you could run it through a flowery folder, anything you want. But that is beautiful. And if you wanted to, you could even maybe highlight this with a bit of gilding wax or something. So yeah, that's another amazing, um, technique to try. I've embossed this which is the floral mandala from Sizzix, another beautiful really deep embossing folder. Now I'm going to turn it over to the deboss side and I've got a craft knife and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out little elements that I want to cut away hence making it a custom emboss. Now you need a folder, you know, that is clear, has bits that you can actually cut. You don't want to be, you know, fighting your way through, I don't know, like tiny little flowers or something. You want something that you know you're going to be able to cut out. And that's basically what you do is just customise it. So. And then what you can do then is pop a nice piece of card underneath it with like either gold or a nice colour. I actually think I may need to change the blade on this. Okay. There's one. So then I could come along with say a black piece of card, pop it through. Or I might want to cut out, you know, a different piece or just keep cutting out all of this or what I could even do 
is just come along and try this one so just have a go see what you like see what you come up with see what would look nice so when I have it on my card I could have all little bits cut out so try it see what you you come up with this one is make your own embossing folder and I mean literally make your own now what I've got is two pieces of like thick cardboard chipboard whatever you want to call it and um, this is really good to use which is the Sizzix mixed media board you get five sheets of white five sheets of like a brown and it's really good and that's what I've used for the bases of it of course you can make it any size you want I've chose a six by four so two pieces exactly the same pick some dies and um, I've just wanted to have mine like these kind of leaf dies I've cut tons of them out because we're going to have to layer them together I use a lot of like Amazon packaging for these you can see it's got the little writing on it doesn't matter because we're not going to be using it as such it's just a tool so it doesn't really matter now obviously we need to layer them up because one isn't isn't thick enough probably three I would say um, so just layer each one up three times and then what you're going to do is you're just going to stick all of the layers to wherever you want them in your folder and then I'll do that and I'll be back okay so I just wanted to quickly share a little tip this is how it's coming on and I've stuck all of my chipboard pieces down you do need to let the glue dry before you run it through but anyway I want to have some bits kind of hanging off just to make it more realistic looking and um, but obviously it depends what you're using but trying to cut through maybe three or four layers might be a bit hard for you you know if you have dexterity problems or your scissors might not be able to cope with it whatever it doesn't matter I'm going to show you a way you can do it so I've got three layers here this is what I've been using on all of them and I want to sort of have this one kind of hanging off like that so what I'm going to do is stick this one down just there like that okay then I'm going to get some I'll get these ones because they're already stuck up with glue then I'm going to trim this off okay then I'm going to take the next layer and I'm going to put the glue on here I think you can get where I'm going with this line that up identical do the same again cut this away so can you see what I mean by this is your scissors are only going through one layer at a time rather than three or four which is so much easier to cut and well I suppose just less um, wear and tear on your scissors as well so and then again just cut that and cut that so that's how you can also you know get that partial kind of emboss and then again I'm probably going to do the same somewhere down here with this little one some of this just this random tape and I'm just going to snip a bit off and I'm basically going to just join it together just put some tape on there make sure it's all lined up and then just bring the tape over okay so now we have our own folder so I'm just going to get some card and we'll test it out okay so I've got some card and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in so these are going to drop on the top okay now I've got a base plate and I've got two cutting pads ok 
Okay. Now let's check out how cool this is. Oops, it's even put my little um, patterns on the front. <laughs> so I could maybe draw around them with a pencil or just write on the front leaf embossing folder. How cool is that though? And then look what happens when you start running it through, you get the deboss making it more like a real folder. Maybe you could just run it through first without your paper in a couple of times to get the deboss. That is pretty amazing. Look at that, that is absolutely gorgeous. And the detail in that as well, it's picked up all the little veins. So there you go. Make your own embossing folders. Get your dies out, just layer them up. Write on the front what it is and you've got your folder. So the last one, one is I'm not sure if you're aware but Sizzix do um Sizzix and Tim Holtz do this emboss and diffuser set and um, you get three in the pack you get a circle you get a oval and you get a really big oval in the middle now I have very little um normal embossing folders I would call them you know the flat ones um, this one here that I've kept, I've just wanted to show you, that's the oval. Um, and the only other one I've got is really this one, but we're gonna I'm going to show you. So what you, what you need to do, put your card in the folder, close it. Now, if I get the oval back, you just need to position it where basically this is going on the folder I just want to see where it's going to be and then I'm going to turn it over without moving it and I'm just putting it on the base platform then I'm going to put one clear cutting pad on the top and we're going to run this through and there we go I mean obviously I haven't lined it up straight because really what's best is if you have a folder the same size then you're not having to guesstimate where the you know the aperture not aperture but the diffusing is but yeah I'll put the link for that because you can get some really nice looks on your folders right that is it I hope you've enjoyed this and if you want more of these type of videos let us know um you know, I think it's great to just use our stash, use what we've got, different ways to use them. Um, please subscribe, you know, like, comment, even share the video. It all helps my channel just keep growing, which I, I do want to keep growing. I would love to get to 100k. Um, but yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. I'll timestamp the video again. So if you just want to pick you know, a, a topic that you want, not a topic, but pick a certain part or a certain technique, um, you can do it by clicking under the video. Please keep voting um, for the Crafts Beautiful Awards. I was nominated for the Most Inspiring Blog. Um, I think there's five of us all together, but I would love your vote. It would mean so much to win. Yeah, so enough rambling. Take care. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.